I'm rolling. This is another Tech Talk with Paul and Alan. Here's yeah. Paul with a box. It's a box. This mm -hmm. is probably one of the most common early portable televisions. 1948 Motorola. I used to have one of these I bought from the widow of a traveling salesman, I swear to God. And you carry it. It weighs about 40 pounds. It's portable. It's portable. But you open it up. And inside is a seven inch television and in the lid you would have had the rabbit ears and a, a little mounting base for it. I've got the rabbit ears, they're just not in the case. Wow, Motorola? And Motorola. What's that growing on the top of the picture There tube? was a rubber gasket uh -huh. that holds the tube in, of course it has melted. Uh -huh. uh, I've got several of these, got this one at Canton. Uh -huh. uh, we stalked this guy for for four or five months uh -huh. and finally the last time we were there he was desperate enough he let us have it cheap and of course they always say well it, it works I thought well yeah right so we bought this one and I thought well I got nothing to lose let's plug it in and see what it does and I it was it smokes mm -hmm. no I was surprised that it didn't smoke let me see here. Let's get that out of the way. And do I have an antenna feed <clears throat> that's any good? I really don't. I hate digital television. Ooh. Keep watching. It, it obviously has a bad capacitor. Uh, I'd rather have a have an open capacitor than a shorted capacitor at this age. Now what's that, that on the top? That's where the rabbit ears plug in. Uh -huh. they're, they're not here. Uh, let's see if we get any semblance of a picture. There's one that's well, at least it's got high voltage. Well, we, we, we've got high voltage and we know the CRT is good. <clears throat> I mean, a hum is no big deal. This is a hot chassis television. Mm -hmm. Dangerous Ele to work electrostatic, on. Electrostatic, that's a pain. Electrostatic sweet. Which is good. Yeah, well. At least For repair. Say, well, yeah. It's like a glorified oscilloscope. Is sort of. Mm -hmm. But these have... For high voltage, they need about 2,000 volts. Mm -hmm. So there's no flyback because there's no yoke. Mm -hmm. But they take a 6B tickler oscillator uh -huh. for high voltage. They literally take the rectifier tube uh -huh. and put a metal spring around the belly of the rectifier as feedback to a tickler oscillator uh -huh. <clears throat> to get the 2,000 volts for the picture tube. Hmm. Kind of weird. So this one's making high voltage. We've got a little bit of sweep. The picture tube's good. Mm -hmm. Uh, we see a little noise in the picture. This is going to be a fairly easy restoration. Now mm -hmm. I've got another one. It's got shorted capacitors. We don't know the state of the picture tube because it's just dead as a doornail. Mm -hmm. But this one for the price we paid was a pretty damn good deal. Mm -hmm. uh, a little rough in some places, but if you were traveling, a traveling salesman in the 40s mm -hmm. and you stayed at Hotels, motels, mm -hmm. whatever. There was no entertainment. Mm -hmm. If you had uh, a better motel, you might have had a pay radio. Mm -hmm. 25 cents, you get three hours of listening to Amos and Andy or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, you might have even had a pay electric fan if you wanted air conditioning. Mm -hmm. But televisions weren't put in motels until God, way up in the 60s. Mm -hmm. So if you were on the road a lot, and you had this, and you were anywhere near a, a city with a TV station. Mm -hmm. You could set this down in your room, and you would be the center of attention because you had television. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the screen's kind of small, but it beat nothing. Mm -hmm. Got so, a good speaker. Yeah, and 
I say it's it's a little gutless wonder, but it works. And how do you get inside of it? Uh, take the back off, take out four screws, the whole chassis slides out. Mm -hmm. The picture tube stays in the cabinet. Uh, I've got the tube out of the other one still sitting here. I moved the set up north. There's the original picture tube out of one. Mm -hmm. And during World War II, this would have been a radar tube mm -hmm. with a different color phosphor, blue or green. Mm -hmm. And they just took the existing radar tubes, put white phosphor in them, and called them TV picture tubes, mm -hmm. and uh, built TV sets around it. Okay, and this was like 1940 what? This is 1948. 47, uh -huh. 48, 49. These sets were pretty much gone by 1950. Uh huh. This is a, a 7JP4, P4 mm -hmm. meaning a white phosphor. Mm -hmm. You keep seeing tubes on eBay that have P1 phosphor. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's for a TV set. No, P1 is green. It'll mm -hmm. make a picture, but it'll be green. Mm -hmm. The P and a number tells you what color and persistence the phosphor was. Mm -hmm. Most people don't know that P4 is television white. P1, 2, 3, 6, 7, 9, 11, 13 are all different specialty phosphors. But mm -hmm. there's a spare tube right there. Um, I got a chassis out of a thrift store over in Oklahoma a few years ago. Paid $15 for the whole chassis. Mm -hmm with one of these tubes on it. Mm -hmm. I thought, well, if nothing else, the tube's any good, that'll come in real handy. Mm -hmm. Last set I did, I needed a tube, and by God, I had one. Mm -hmm. But all that for a seven inch picture. And the weird part about this is we're used to aluminized picture tubes, mm -hmm. where you've got the glass, the phosphor, and the back of the tube is sprayed with an aluminum dust, mm -hmm. which makes a brighter picture because it focuses the light forward. Mm -hmm. This one, if you look in the back of the tube, half the light goes back into the tube. Mm -hmm. So this side of the set lights up like a Christmas tree. Mm -hmm. So this is an early phosphor only picture tube. Not a lot of contrast and uh, the electrons tend to share phosphor dots with each other. Mm -hmm. So the picture has kind of a uh, uh, newspaper cartoon look. Mm -hmm. But hey, it was a picture. Mm -hmm. When you were a kid watching a Western on this, you didn't care. Mm -hmm. And they weren't very bright. If they were made from 40 watt to 40 watt? Hmm? They were made from 1940 watt to 1940 Well, watt. these two came out of World War II. Right. And these little 7 inch sets were made from 46 to about 49. Uh huh. As we got bigger sets and higher voltage and mm -hmm. then rectangular tubes about 1950. Mm hmm. All the early sets were 7 or 10 inch. This still might have been running way into the 50s. Oh, though. somebody could have watched this set way up into the, the 60s if they wanted to. Mm hmm. Yeah. Or even the 70s, 80s, or 90s because the signal was still there. As long as analog was on the ear, these sets worked, yes. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was neat. And to find once you plug it in and it actually does something, mm -hmm. that was a treat. Because usually you plug them in, they either smoke or they're dead. Mm -hmm. This one, by God, it did light up, mm -hmm. which means I could tack a couple of filter caps in it and uh, clean the tuner and probably have a picture in about 30 minutes mm -hmm. if I really wanted to. Wow. Yeah. But that's something you don't see every day. Put this back where I found it. 